The Gold Picasso Part Start with I did some shout outs. So let's get into some Goldie Gossip shout outs. I've got a multitude of new fans. I'm, I'm really, really glad about that. Let's get into the shout outs. First of all, I'd like to give a big shout out to Kim King. That's my dog in Detroit. She's a very sweet young lady hanging out with uh, Gabriel's Lounge. A lot of live music. Shout out to Kim King and Catherine White. Shout out to Catherine White. Baby girl, you've been rocking with me. I really appreciate it. I dropped you in my last video. I hope you enjoyed that. Tracy Reed. Tiffany Thornton. Dorothy Zorby. Now, Dorothy Zorby is a very interesting young lady. She lives in England. No, I take that back. I'm tripping. She lives in France, and she only speaks French. But she been rocking with me. Not to mention, she fine. I mean, beautiful. But anyway, shout out to Dorothy Zorby. Uh, one of my dogs in Detroit, I dropped him in my last video, uh, LJ Reynolds. Shout out to LJ in Detroit. He's doing a lot of great things. Uh, my old peeps from long time ago, Ann Alderid and her daughter, Mariah Avila. Shout out to my peeps there. My, one of my longest Facebook friends, Sophia Vendergast. Shout out to Sophia. Love you, baby girl. My, my dog in Detroit, Marshall Allen. I dropped him in the video as well. Kurt LeVert Gilmore. I dropped him in my latest video. Uh, what up, though? 313. Uh, Shout out Kurt LeVert Gilmore in Detroit. He be jamming all the time. Uh, O.B. King out of Detroit. He's another performer. He follows me. That's my dog. Shout out to O.B. King. My nephew, Julian Rayshon Bell. Shout out to Rayshon. I dropped him in the video. Twan Green the third. Now he's a bad boy. Twan Green can do everything. I dropped him in the video. Shout out to Twan, Twan Green the third. Gina Wilson. She's a very sweet young lady. She's been following me real hard. Shout out to Gina Wilson. Um, Kathy Anderson. Kathy Anderson is a very good fan. She been following me. Um, where am I at here? Um, oh yeah, Brooke Abigail. I love Brooke Abigail, man. She's a wild character. I really love Brooke Abigail. Not to mention, she fine too. So shout out to Brooke Abigail and uh, Rebecca Rose. Oh, she is so. She speaks so, so proper, and she's so 
very pretty, almost like Barbie. I love Rebecca Rose. Shout out to her and my peeps in Detroit. These are relatives, Donna and Grandma Kelly. Shout out to you guys. All right? Those are my shout outs. And now it's time for another True Hollywood Story. So let me take you back. Let me take you way back. When I first got to L.A., I always wanted to have an apartment in L.A. I didn't want to just be there as a tourist, you know, walking up and down the boardwalk. I wanted to live in L.A. So I struck out from Detroit. I got here to L.A. And I want to tell you about two apartments that I had in L.A. I only had two. No, I'm sorry, not in L.A., in Hollywood. In Hollywood, I only had two apartments. And I'm going to tell you about it. So, my first apartment was on the Sunset Strip. And my second apartment was on Hollywood Boulevard. But I'm going to tell you about the first one. So, I moved in to an apartment on Las Palmas between the Long Pre and Fountain. This was just basically one, basically one block over from Sunset. I love this apartment. It had the parquet floors. I had a bar at the kitchen. And I had a, a, a big picture window in my living room. It was very large. And the cool thing about it was when I looked out of my window, I could look up at the Hollywood sign. That blew me away. I love it. I said, I'm finally here. I, every morning I would wake up, smoke me one, open up my window and look up at the Hollywood sign. And uh, the, at this time, uh, Sunset wasn't cleaned up. The hookers and stuff were still walking up and down uh, Sunset. And I was cool with them. You know, every, when, at that time, I didn't have a car. I would have to catch the bus to Children's Hospital and back. But it wasn't far. It was just one bus up uh, Sunset. And when I would get off of work, I would you know, kick it with the hookers and stuff. We smoke a joint. And uh, anyways, I love that apartment. And one day, I opened up the apartment window. And across the street, there were Hispanic dudes selling weed out on the street, right on the corner of Las Palmas. And I could see the activity from my window. So check this out. They had a stash in a bush right across the street from my window. They would go to the stash, they would pull out a bag, a customer would pull up, and they would sell it to them. So I was watching that and I said, man, that's interesting. So one day, I observed him going to the package. He got the package and a car pulled up. And he got in the car and they took off. And the devil got into me. The devil was in me. I ran across the street. I jumped, I reached my hand in that bush where he had the stash. I grabbed the stash. I ran back upstairs and I closed my windows and I just kicked it. I opened up the bag. 
and I had his whole stash. It was like, I don't know about 20 bags of, of uh, about 10 bags of 20 sacks. And man, I had hit gold. I was so happy after I hit up. But anyways, I was looking out the window and he came back. When he came back, he reached into the bush to find a stash and he stopped tripping. He was tripping. I could see him rumbling for it. Like, where is it at? It was gone. I had stained him and he was tripping out, man. I, took, I ain't never did nothing like that ever since. But anyways, that was a good incident that happened when I was living in that apartment. I love that apartment. So now, let me take you about the second apartment that I had. This apartment was on Orange Drive between Hollywood Boulevard and Franklin, going up into the Hollywood Hills. Guys, let me tell you, I'm not going to lie to you. I virtually lived right in back of Man's Chinese Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. Now you may think that would be the coolest thing in the world. I love my apartment. It was, a, it was only a studio apartment. I didn't even have transportation in. I was catching a bus back and forth, working for Children's Hospital, and I only had to catch one bus. It was the, the number one bus on Hollywood Boulevard straight down to the hospital, which was on uh, Sunset in Vermont. But anyways, this apartment, I was happy because I was like in Hollywood. When I say in Hollywood, I'm riding back a man's Chinese theater. But in, it ended up being a nightmare. Night and day. People were coming to Hollywood. Soon as they get to Hollywood, the first thing they want to do is go up Hollywood Boulevard. I'm telling you, two o'clock in the morning, people hollering and screaming, Oh, yeah, Hollywood, woo! The hookers walking up and down the street. People selling drugs all up and down the street. The traffic was non-stop. I'm telling you, it was no peace. It was never quiet. 24 hours a day in Hollywood. It was chaos. And I, I need quiet. I have to have my quiet, so check this off. One day, I, I, I know you guys are gonna remember this, Back when Prince was premiering Purple Rain, he premiered it at Man's Chinese Theater. And man, when he premiered that movie, there was a million people, well, maybe not a million, but thousands of people all on Hollywood Boulevard, crowded around Man's Chinese Theater, the lights was going, Prince was showing up. I was just getting off of work. And when I got there, when I got off the bus, excuse me, I'm belching. <clears throat> when I got off the bus, it was so many people, I could not walk over to my apartment. I couldn't walk over to my apartment. I mean, it was so many people. I had to get back on the bus and go over to Mike and Tanya's house and hang out until the crowd went away. Now check this off, y'all. After all the crowd went away, there was this giant poster. I mean, this poster was like two stories high. It was like two stories high. Some dudes 
went there, like I had to get to work early in the morning. So I had to catch the one bus, which is right in front of Man's Chinese Theater. And I'm sitting there and these dudes went to Hollywood Boulevard, climbed up on Man's Chinese Theater, pulled down that Prince folk, that Prince poster. It was huge. I'm telling you, it was like two stories high. They pulled it down. They rolled that summer bitch over uh, uh, onto a long pole and bailed up Hollywood Boulevard with that Prince poster. I was tripping out. I said, damn. <laughs> Ooh, that was good, man. But anyways... Those were my two apartments in, in Hollywood. I had to move out of that apartment because it was too chaotic. I ended up moving to, to Frogtown. Uh, it's like one block up from uh, uh, Griffith Park. One block up from Griffith Park. It's called Frogtown. That was a nice apartment. I was only paying like 260 a month. It was newly furnished. I had two bedrooms. That was a nice apartment. But anyways, another story, another day. Those, that, that's my true Hollywood stories of my Hollywood apartments. And I loved it. Guys, I'm going to kick it with my latest video. Um, what up, though? 313. Kick it. What up, my man? What up, Joe? What up, Joe? What up, Joe? What up, Joe? in the hood got it too right and when I see my niggas coming I just see them like what up dog 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 Oh, 